What's up everybody, Joe Tapperia here. Today I'm gonna to be talking to the future car buyers or even the regrettable car buyers, someone looking to probably get rid of the car and get into a new one. Um, we're gonna to talk to you specifically. Today's topic is seven things you should do before you buy a car. So stay tuned. This is another episode of the Joe Credit Show. Um, so let's dive right into the content at hand. Um, so we're gonna talk about a couple things you can do in preparation for, for buying a new car. And the purpose behind this is because buying a car along with you know also buying a house or, or some major purchases that the, the average individual is gonna make in their lifetime. So it's very important that you are best prepared, you do your research, you do your homework, and, and get ready to make a sound, educated, logistical, you know, financial you know, decision here and not put yourself in a position where you put yourself in a financial bind or make finan your financial matters worse. So you want to be best prepared for these types of purchases and today I'm talking more specifically um, about cars. So why cars are important and this is, can be applied to cars, trucks, vans, whatever, right? Same thing, auto, let's just say automobiles. So why this is important is because compared to, to buying a house, why it's very important to do extra homework um, on vehicles is because vehicles are not going to appreciate in value. Your home could, in most cases your, your house will, um, depending on the location, depending on uh, some other variables, but you know, traditionally your home will appreciate in value. You, you own your home, usually you can you know, one day sell it for more than what you bought it, make a profit, and so on. It's rented out, things like that. Okay, so your your home could be one of the the best you know investments you ever make in your life. Now, with the car, on the other hand, cars normally don't appreciate in value unless it's like a classy vehicle where there's collectors that that want certain vehicles that are very hard to find. Sure, you can probably you know make a pretty penny on those, but for the normal everyday vehicles. That, uh, that that you know your average consumer will buy, those typically are not going to appreciate in value. They don't become more valuable in time. They become less valuable over time. So you be very careful on the vehicle you buy because if you already from the get-go, the, 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 the vehicle that you're buying is already going down in value as opposed to going up. So you gotta, you gotta make the best decision here so you don't lose a whole lot of money or pay a lot more for a depreciating liability so for for some folks that are watching this uh maybe it's too late um for the first vehicle or the second vehicle but you know for future vehicles this is going to be very helpful so you don't make some of the same mistakes especially those that are paying you know 10 15 maybe even 20 percent interest on on a vehicle on an auto loan that that vehicle has lost tremendous amount of values and to make matters worse probably that vehicle may has needed uh, quite a bit of repairs or it's broken down before and it's almost not even worth it to fix it up you know when you factor in what interest rate you're paying that vehicle at how much you've paid in interest what the value of the car is there's, there's, there's a lot of breaking points for a lot of people that got you know didn't do a lot of their homework in the very beginning to where they're in a financial bind with the vehicle and a lot of times they just have to let it go so you know th this vehicle is is for is for you know definitely uh, this video, rather, I don't know if I said this vehicle, but this video is for people to help avoid those mistakes in the future. And uh, even for first time car buyers, this is gonna be very good information for you as well. So again, seven things you should do before you buy a vehicle. Number one is to decide whether or not you should buy or you should lease. Okay, those are some, some options there. You can lease a car. You, you can also buy a new one or buy a used one, right? So how do you know which one makes the most sense for you, leasing or, or buying. So I'll, I'll kind of talk about pros and cons of, of leasing versus buying, and you can kind of decide what category you fall into, what you lean more towards, and kind of start there in terms of the acquisition type. Is it, is it gonna be a lease or is it gonna be a, a purchase? So with, with leasing, leasing has, has, has some benefits to it. With leasing, you don't have to really worry about the maintenance on the vehicle, right? So if something goes wrong with the engine or something goes wrong with the drivetrain or whatever the case may be, 
that is the responsibility of the dealership because they are essentially the owner of that vehicle leasing it to you. So it's their responsibility, not yours, to 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 fix any issues that are along with that that are with the vehicle. Like if you had an apartment and there's issues in, with with something inside the apartment, you call the leasing office, they send maintenance, and they fix it, right? And they don't charge you, you know, for that um, and where they're not supposed to. And that's part of the reason of you paying rent is that they're ensuring that everything is going to be, you know, kept up to up to up to speed and be in good condition, so on and so forth. Same thing with vehicles. So with leasing, again, you don't have to really worry about, about maintenance on it. A lot of times you're leasing something new anyway, so there really wouldn't be much issue anyway. But if there is, the dealership is going to be the one typically responsible to to take care of that. And with, with leasing, depending on your credit score, depending on how good, how strong your credit score is at the time that you're leasing something, you're, you can pay uh, a lot less, a lot, a lot less on a monthly payment compared to compared to a purchase loan, uh, compared to to a vehicle loan um, for a very nice vehicle. You can get a Mercedes, you can get something very very nice, and your monthly payment would be you know a lot less than, than what you think it actually could be. Again, depending on how strong your credit is and what kind of lease term you actually work out. With leasing, you do get the option to buy at the end of the lease. So maybe you'll lease for three years and you'll, you'll lease for you know, up to 40,000 miles. And at the end of that lease, they'll give you the option to buy the vehicle at whatever price you know, is, the, is, is decided upon at that point, you know, when you factor in mileage and things like that. Um, or you can have the option to just walk away from it or jump into another lease. So with that said, leasing, leasing vehicles are great for someone who is like, if you're, if you're the type of person that you, you love new cars that come out, you want to be a new vehicle, if you like, like the new stuff that comes out, you usually don't hold on to a car for like more than you know five years, you're like every two, three years you want a new vehicle, you're kind of going from vehicle to vehicle to vehicle, maybe leasing would make the most sense, especially if your credit's not that strong, because if you're going from vehicle to vehicle to vehicle with bad credit and you're financing it, at a high rate, you're you're usually carrying over a lot of a lot of uh, deficiency balances uh, because the, the car has negative equity. So you're carrying that over to the new loan, so on and so forth. And so that's usually not not a good way to go. So that's where leasing would make the most sense in that scenario for someone who is constantly wanting to get you know the new vehicle every two three years. You're, you're usually not someone who stays in the same vehicle. You want the, the latest and greatest at all times. Maybe leasing would make the most amount of sense. Um, so, you know, when, when it comes to buying a car and deciding whether to buy used or, or new, um, pros and cons and all that, you know, buying, buying used actually would be a little bit better than buying new because when you buy new, you're paying for the depreciation. Once you drive off the car lot, that, that vehicle is going to depreciate in value rapidly. And so when you're buying new, you're the one that's paying for that depreciation. When you're buying used, someone has already paid for that depreciation because they bought the car new and you're basically picking up a lot of the upside. So for example, let's say you're buying yourself a new pickup truck, right? A new new Ford truck, right? And um, it, brand new is like $60,000. But take that same truck three years later, 40,000 miles on it, it's probably not 60,000, maybe it's 40,000. Okay, so that, that $20,000 difference is because obviously the car has some miles on it, the car has some age on it. Um, that's also you know, what depreciation is. And so therefore, you know, it's not as valuable as a brand new truck. And so, but to you, that truck is perfect, it's fine. That truck will probably last for like another 150, maybe 200,000 miles on it. That's the truck you've always wanted. That's the truck you're gonna have for, long, you know, for the long haul. It would probably make more sense to wait a couple years, let someone else put the miles, miles on it, let someone else pay for the depreciation, and you buy that car uh, used and do a, a loan on that to, to purchase you know, that vehicle. So that's personally my recommendation. If you're looking at it from, from, from a long game perspective, you're not someone who's looking to jump from car to car to car, you're looking for the car you're gonna hold on to or the, or the truck you're gonna hold on to for a long period of time. Um, I, per, I personally would recommend doing a lot of homework, doing a lot of research, figuring out what vehicle you want to stick with and, and purchasing something new, I'm sorry, use, let someone else pay for that depreciation and you get all you know that upside. So that's number one, decide between leasing or buying. Number two is basically deciding on a car. And, and, and this is important, you would think that this is kind of common sense, well duh, I know what kind of car to get, but you need to do a little bit more homework, a little more research. Not only the, the, the car itself, the type of car, but the exact car, right? Doing some homework, 
on this and figuring out what exact car and what you know what dealership you want to go to is the car that you're going to want to want a specific car right so you start off with obviously figuring out what what make what model you know what color uh, what, what what kind of mileage you want on it you know no more than such such and such mileage what price what trimming because um, again, all vehicles come with different kind of trims, different kind of features, different kind of upgrades. You need to decide what exact kind of car you want and then kind of narrow it down to probably a couple of different dealerships that would have exactly what you're looking for. And even before you decide to move forward, do your homework on those types of vehicles. Do your homework on those types of, of, of cars, trucks. And a great way to do some research on it is, of course, on each vehicle, probably request the Carfax so you know what kind of, uh, you know, what the history is on that vehicle, especially if you're buying a used. Um, look the vehicle up on Kelly Blue Book, uh, I think it's kbb.com, um, just to kind of get a, a you know, a third, third, third party's perspective on the value of that vehicle. You can plug in the make, model, year, mileage, all that stuff on that vehicle, and you know, Kelly Blue, Kelly Blue is pretty reputable. They'll spit out what the value, true value is of that vehicle, so you can know for a fact if you're getting a good deal or not. And look up YouTube, look at some YouTube reviews. A lot of people, you know, they, they get paid to just test these cars out, give their opinion, um, do some YouTube, YouTube uh, uh, searches on the vehicle that you're looking for and really get a, get a good you know, understanding of you know, what you're getting into and how the vehicle, what, what, what people are saying about that vehicle. Of course, you, know, you don't want to solely base your decision based on that, but take it into an account. Of, of what other people are saying, how other people are experiencing that vehicle, what does Kelly Blue Book say, what does the, the Carfax say. Do some homework, do some research you know, beforehand before you decide to, to, to move forward. And even test drive a couple of them. A lot of these dealerships, they'll bring the vehicle to you. So you know, if you can't make it out there, tell them, hey, I want, I'm really interested in this vehicle. Um, I'm in the market, this is kind of what I'm looking for. I can't make it out there, busy work schedules, any way you can bring it to my office during my lunchtime or any way you can come to my house. Um, you know, worst thing they can say is no, but many of them will say yes, they'll, they'll come to you. They have lots, a lot of these dealerships have different programs to where they'll bring the vehicle to you and you can test drive it, you know, near, nearby where you're at. So that's number two, pick the vehicle that you, that you absolutely want, do your homework, do your research, test drive a couple of them, you know, before you actually make a decision on whether or not to move forward. Um, number three is to, the third thing you want to do before you buy a car is set yourself a monthly budget, a monthly payment cap, where, where basically you're saying, I will not, I, my monthly payment on the vehicle cannot exceed this amount. So figure out what that amount is and make sure you do that exceed that amount. No ifs, ands, or buts, that is the top line of your budget. So to figure that out, I would recommend you know, spending a couple of hours looking at your finances, doing a budget if you haven't done one in a while, take a, take a real account to what is your income, what is your monthly debt obligations looking like, what is the next six months, next one year, next two years, what does what the future possibly look, look like, and make a determination of realistically what is the most you want to pay on this vehicle. Now don't make yourself broke from the car payment. You know, you want to make sure you have money left over for, for food, gas, tollways, maintenance, oil changes, things like that. Take that into an account and figure out what is the absolute most you want to pay on a new vehicle. And make that your cap, meaning that you will not pay a dollar more, not, a, not, a, not, not anything above that, because that is the breaking point. That is the most that you're, you're willing to pay on that. And it's good to know that going in, because some people, what they'll do is, <clears throat> they'll walk into the dealership because they really want a vehicle and they really haven't taken into an account their finances and the dealer's like, hey, this is what your monthly payment in your head. Like, oh, that sounds good. I think I can swing that. And you haven't really thought of everything and find out you really can't afford it. So you need to really do your homework and really take into account your finances before you set foot on the lot, before you start making some calls, before you start looking for, uh, before deciding which vehicle you want to move forward on, figure out what's the most you, you want to do. And another thing too that you can do is you can Google um, auto loan calculator. So you can, you can figure out just by plugging in the price of that car, uh, plugging in what interest rate you think you may get, which the next, the next topic I'll talk about credit a little bit and how you can determine what interest rate you may land at if you put any money down, so on and so forth. And then it'll kind of tell you what your monthly payment will be on a 72 month term or 60 month term. Uh, five-year loan, six-year loan, I think there's even a seven-year loan now. So you kind of figure out what the monthly payment will look like on these terms. And so you think you kind of know before you even make contact to the dealership um, what kind of term you're probably going to need, what kind of monthly payment makes sense for you, what interest rate you're going to need. So that way you're, you're, you're really uh, educated before you go into 
finance before you go into the dealership so you know exactly what you need to do, what your top line budget is, what your what your non-negotiable is, so therefore you know, you know, if you need to walk away from the deal, you know exactly what it's gonna take to, to basically walk away. So that's number three, setting yourself a budget, having a, a, monthly, a monthly payment cap where you're not gonna exceed that amount no matter what. Number four, um, the fourth thing you should do before you buy a vehicle is to figure out what your FICO auto score is, okay? So don't base your, 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 your credit score on Credit Karma. Don't base it on your, your credit card uh, app. You wanna know your FICO auto score. And that's gonna be the score that car dealerships and auto lenders are gonna go off of. It's called FICO auto. Other videos I talk about FICO mortgage for mortgage companies. You wanna know your FICO auto score. So go to myfico.com, you set up an account for like 40 bucks. My FICO doesn't pay me anything for saying this, I wish they did, um, and I say that quite a bit because I like FICO a lot. My FICO um, uh, mobile app and, and the, uh, the online service that, that it provides, um, because it's the only website out there that provides your true and, and up-to-date and accurate FICO scores from FICO Auto, FICO 8, FICO Bank Card, FICO Mortgage, which those scores are gonna be what really matters at the end of the day. So check out your, your FICO Auto score. And, and look at all bureaus, okay? So you know, you're gonna have three different credit report agencies. You've got Equifax, you've got Experian, you've got TransUnion. And look what your FICO auto score is on each and every single one. And if your FICO score, your FICO auto score is above 620, then I think you're in a good spot to, to take the next step and to look at financing options and moving forward. If it's below 620, then you probably wanna work on your credit a little bit. And which means you probably won't be able to, you won't be buying a car today, um, but you'll probably, you know, want to research, you know, probably want to come back to it in about 30 to 60 days after you work on your credit a little bit. Because you don't want to finance, again, remember when you drive off the lot, that car's losing value, it's depreciating in value. So if you're, if you're buying a liability like a vehicle that's depreciating in value at 10% interest or more, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to do that. It's not a financial decision you want to make. So, you know, be patient here. I know it's easy said than done. We live in a society where we want everything like that. This is a time where you really want to delay the gratification a little bit. This is where, this is, if you ever would delay the gratification on a financial decision, this is definitely one of those moments. So, take your time, do your homework, and take a look at your FICO auto score. Now, if it's below 620, if you have some open credit cards and those balances are close to the limit or you know 50 percent used pay some of those down i would recommend paying those credit cards down to exactly one percent of whatever the credit limit is so for example if the credit card has a 500 dollars credit limit pay that card down to five bucks exactly that's one percent to 500 and then wait for that account to report to the bureau so the credit card companies report once per month the way you find out when your credit card reports is take a look at your statements and the statements will have like statement dates from and to like so from it's going to be 30 like a 30 day window normally it'll say something like from january 1st through january 30th right whatever it may say so that final date is typically the date that the statement closes and whatever information is on that date that's what gets reported to the bureaus so that's going to be the date that that credit card company reports to the credit bureaus so make sure that you pay your credit card balances down to 1% before that date. And make sure it stays at 1% um, until they report to, to the bureaus. And then refresh your, your FICO auto score in about 30 days. My FICO will provide an updated report once per month um, and no additional cost. And they even give you alerts along the way when things get reported, things update. So if you're not above 620, then you wanna wait, work on your credit a little bit, and then come up, you know, come back when you're above 620. If you are above, once you are above 620, then you wanna to move to, to step number five, which is to get pre-approved at a credit union before you go and talk to financing at a, at a dealership. And so why that's important is because credit unions historically offer the best interest rates on vehicles. I've seen interest rates as low as 1% with credit unions. So what you wanna do is, is once your scores are above 620, run a Google search or just, you know, if you, if you don't know who your local credit union is or a credit union nearby, run a Google search, credit union near me, find one, make a couple calls and see if they do any auto loan financing. Sometimes they require you to be a member of the credit union, which means you have to open up a bank account with them. 
uh, or many of them don't. They, 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 they look at it as if we get your auto loan business and maybe down the road you'll, you'll we'll get your, your other business for some other, other products, right? So many of them will, will, will just do the auto loan for you. So basically they make a couple calls and find out if they are doing auto loans and kind of what the, the next step would be to get the auto loan process going. So get your own financing at the credit union, again, because credit unions are very competitive and have your pre-approval from the credit union ready to go. And the reason why you wanna do that is because when you step foot into, when you start going to the dealership and they want to see if they can get you financed there, which many of them are gonna push that because dealerships make some money on selling the car, they make more of the money on the financing. Okay, that's where they make, that's their bread and butter is on the financing. So clearly they're gonna to want to steer you away from the credit union to have you use one of their loans. It's okay to let them check your credit and see what else is out there. It's not gonna lower your score because of the deduplication logic that kicks in with FICO scoring, which is as long as those auto inquiries are within 45 days of each other, they'll be scored and treated as one. And so it's okay to have them check and see what their options are, but you know, the, you, know you, you got an offer from a credit union at 1%, 2%, 3%, whatever it may be, and so if the dealership cannot beat that interest rate, then you can tell them, no, I got my own financing. We're gonna go, we're gonna go this direction, okay? And then the credit union will win. Most cases, the credit union probably will win the deal, but you never know. There may be a bank out there that wants to beat that deal and get your business and they'll beat that rate. So that's why it's always good to come in with your own financing, especially from a credit union, to really make them fight for your business versus you having to fight you know, them to even get you, you know, get you a, a, a approval in the first place, right? Make them fight for you, not the other way around. So number six, step number six, the sixth thing you wanna do before you step into, a, into the dealership is to, is to negotiate in advance. Don't negotiate in person, negotiate in advance. And what I mean by that is, what, again, you have your vehicle picked out by now, you know you probably got two or three of them maybe picked out, a couple different dealerships, pick up the phone and call them, okay? Negotiate on the price, make sure that the car is even available. In the first place, sometimes they use you know, nice looking vehicles for marketing you know, scenarios, they make calls come in and say, well, we don't have that one, but we have this one. So make sure they have that exact vehicle that you're looking for and verify the trim, verify the mileage, verify the price. Find out if that price includes tax, title, fees, all that stuff, okay? And so try to get a, a, you know, an accurate picture of what the price is actually going to be, the walkout price, okay? And negotiate a little bit in advance, okay? And, and this, you wanna do this in advance as much as possible by phone and text, and that way you don't spend all day at the dealership. You do that all in advance. It may take an hour or two, kind of going back and forth over the phone, that's fine. And then that way when you, when you have the deal you know, solidified exactly where you want it and it works for you and it's exactly the monthly payment you're looking for, you know, exactly the, the type of vehicle you're looking for, the right trim, the right mileage, the right price, everything makes sense to you. Then you can set the appointment to go in and, uh, and of course finalize the deal. Hopefully by then you've already test drive the vehicle. If you didn't, make sure you schedule that first, you know, get a good feel for the vehicle, test drive a couple of them and have a couple of options you know, lined up. Maybe not only this vehicle, but a couple of others. So you can kind of say, hey, look, I like this one. This dealership has one too. They're offered this price, can you beat that? Be, be the shark in the deal. Don't let them be the shark, you be the shark. You have the buying power, you have the negotiating power. Have your own financing lined up. Have a couple of different options, the vehicles lined up. Make them fight for your business, not the other way around. So negotiate as much as you can in advance by, by making phone calls or you know, text messages or both and that way you're not spending all day at the dealership. Have everything lined up, ready to go. Um, that's typically what I do, we'll negotiate in advance, and I'll say, all right, cool, let's get the deal done, have all the paperwork ready, I'll be there in an hour to get everything signed in, and, and have, have my vehicle washed and ready, you know, oil changed, whatever you need to get done, just make sure it's ready to go, um, because I'm coming in, I'm signing, I'm not gonna be all day, all day, all day there, have my keys ready to go, the, the demo schedule, whatever you need to do, so we can, I can get, out, get in and out as fast as possible. And so, uh, number seven, the final step, the final thing you wanna do before you buy a car is to basically finalize the deal in, in person, obviously, but this is where they start to add on you know, some add-ons, right? This is where they're gonna throw a couple things at you that you wanna get finance in there. Remember your cap, remember your monthly payment cap, and only add on things that you actually need. A lot of things you're not gonna need, but one thing you probably definitely will wanna make sure you get is gap insurance, okay? Gap insurance is very important 
especially when you're buying something new or, or used, you want some gap insurance. Gap insurance is basically insurance that covers um, the difference. So let's say, let's say you get in an accident a year down the line, God forbid, and the car is totaled out. The car, let's say, is only worth 20 grand. At that time, you owe 25,000 on it. The insurance is the insurance company is, going to, is only going to cut a check for what it's worth, so they'll cut a check for 20, leaving you with that $5,000 difference. That's where gap insurance will come in, and gap insurance will cover the deficiency balance, and so you walk away not owing anything. So make sure gap insurance is a good insurance product to get on the vehicle. A lot of other things, if you don't really need it, if it really puts your monthly payment a lot higher than what you budgeted for, you can deal with, with, with a lot of those stuff. You deal without those stuff. And maybe make sure you have a good service package. Okay, so some dealerships will say, hey, 40,000 miles, we'll, we'll cover everything. We'll, we'll do you know everything you need on the vehicle that goes wrong with it. We'll take care of it. Oil changes are discounted. We do like $20 oil changes, free car washes, whatever the case may be. Make sure you're getting a good service package. If they're not bringing it up to you, ask them, what kind of service package do you guys have? When, you know, what, what kind of servicing do you guys do on this vehicle? So maybe sometimes they have a good package, we don't talk about it, they forget to bring it up. Find out what the servicing package actually uh, looks like. And then, then and only then, once you're ready to go, you got the payment, you got the car that you're looking for, you got the payment that you're looking for, you got all the extra that you're looking for, everything makes sense to you, then and only then, you sign the paperwork, you sign the deal. So only sign the deal once you're 100% ready. If you're not fully bought in, you're not fully convinced, don't be afraid to walk away. Don't sign something. Don't put yourself in a contract on something that you're not absolutely sold with, not absolutely, you know, not absolutely in love with. Don't put yourself in that situation. Only do something that you know 100%. You're good to go. You're happy. You're comfortable, and you know that you're going to be able to keep up with the payments. So that is my time today. I hope you enjoyed my seven things you should do before you buy a vehicle. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up or let me know what you think in the comments section. Feel free to drop any questions you have around this as well. Um, lastly, if you're wanting to learn a little bit more about how to improve your credit, go to my website, go to joechavaria.com slash links. It'll be in the description or in my bio if you're watching me on Instagram. Other than that, I want to thank you for your time today. I'm Joe Chavaria. This has been another episode of the Joe Credit Show. Take care, guys.